welcome back so previously we discussed about designing for change and anticipating for change now let's dive into the value sensitive design so in hci we describe the idea of interfaces becoming invisible some of that is a usability principle but it also applies more broadly to the way that interfaces integrate themselves into our everyday lives and if our interfaces are going to integrate into people's lives then they need to share the same values as those individuals as well this connects to the field of value sensitive design the value sensitive design lab at the university of washington defines this idea by saying value sensitive design seeks to provide theory and method to account for human values in a principled and systematic manner throughout the design process in this way value sensitive design is another dimension to consider when designing interfaces not only is an interface useful in accomplishing a task and not only it is, is it use, usable by the user but is it consistent with their values one of the most well developed application areas of value sensitive design is privacy by design privacy is a value and privacy by design has aimed to preserve that value in the design of systems it's possible to design useful usable interfaces that don't take privacy into account anywhere that's what makes an examination of user's value an extra dimension of interface design now batya friedman is one of the co-directors of the value sensitive design research lab at the university of washington and she co-authored one of the seminal papers on the topic value sensitive design and information systems friedman khan and borning together provide this excellent paper on the philosophy in it they cover three investigations for approaching value sensitive design first the cover conceptual investigations conceptual investigations are like thought experiments where we explore the role values play in questions like who are the direct and indirect stakeholders and how are both classes of stakeholders affected second they cover empirical investigations empirical investigations go out and use real users exploring how they make sense of interfaces and answering questions like how do stakeholders apprehend individual values in the interactive context how do they prioritize individual values and usability considerations third they cover technical investigations technical investigations are like empirical investigations that target the systems instead of the users they ask the same kind of questions but they are especially targeting whether or not the systems are compatible with the values of the users the paper also proposes some of the fundamental features of value sensitive design for example value sensitive design should be proactive and value sensitive design distinguishes between usability and human values if you are playing to work in an area where human values play a significant role and i would argue that that's probably most areas of hci i highly recommend reading through this paper it can have a profound impact not only on the way you design interfaces but on the way you approach user approach one of the challenges with value sensitive design is that values can differ across cultures the internet makes it technologically possible to design single interfaces that are used by people in nearly every country but just because it's technologically possible doesn't mean it's practically possible and one reason for that is different countries and cultures may have vastly different values a relatively recent news worthy example of this occurred with the rights to be forgotten the right to be forgotten is a law in the european union that allows individuals some control over what information is available about them online that's a value held by the european union however technologies like google were not generally developed with that value in mind so there's actually been an extraordinary effort to try to technologically support that right to be forgotten while still providing search capabilities making this even more complicated is the fact that the value isn't universally shared many people argue that the law could actually effectively become internet censorship 
now so now we start to see some conflict in the values between different cultures one culture's values of privacy might run a ray of another culture's value of free speech if we are to design interfaces that can reach multiple cultures we need to understand the values of those cultures especially if it might force us to design different systems for different people in order to match their local values here are five tips for incorporating value sensitive design into your interfaces number 1 start early identify the values you want to account for early in the design process and check on them throughout the design process the nature of value sensitive design is that it might have significant connections not just to the design of the interface but to the very core of the task you are trying to support number 2 know your users i know i say this a lot but in order to design with values in mind you need to know your users values certain values are incompatible with one another or at least present challenges for one another privacy is a value is in some ways in conflict with the value of record keeping to know what to design you need to know your users values number 3 consider both direct and indirect stakeholders we, we usually think about direct stakeholders those are the people that actually use the system that we create value sensitive design encourages us to think about indirect stakeholders as well those are the people who do not use the system but who are nonetheless affected by it when you are designing the internal system for use by a bank for example it's used by bank employees but bank customers are likely to be impacted by the design number 4 brainstorm the interface's possibilities think not only about how your design system to be used but how it could be used if you wanted to make a system that made it easier for employees to track their hours for example consider whether it could be used by employers to find unjust cause for termination number 5 choose carefully between supporting values and prescribing values Designing for change is about prescribing changes in values but that doesn't mean we should try to prescribe values for everyone at the same time there are certain values held in the world that we would like to change with our interfaces if possible with regard to issues like gender equality or economic justice be careful and be deliberate about when you choose to support existing values and when you choose to try to change them with your interfaces so the idea of artifacts or interfaces having political clout brings up two challenges for us as interface designers first we need to think about places where we can use interface design to invoke positive social change and second we also need to think about the possible negative ramifications of our interfaces what undesirable stereotypes are we preserving or what new negative dynamics might we create now obviously i work in online education and i have been struck by both sides of this on the positive side i have been amazed at the power of online education to diminish the significance of superficial obstacles to people's success I have sp- spoken with people who have had difficulty succeeding in traditional college settings due to social anxiety disorders or other disabilities things that had no real connection to how well they understood the material but that made it difficult to interact with other people or to attend to physical classes but by putting everything in forums and emails and text and videos they have been able to overcome those obstacles but there's also the risk that online education will only benefit people who already have advantages the early data suggests that the majority of consumers of online education belong to middle class families there's little data to suggest that it's reaching minorities reaching women in backward areas reaching international students or reaching economically disadvantaged students 
and while I believe that's a problem that can be solved, it's certainly something we need to address. Otherwise, we risk online education being a luxury more than an equalizer. So that's how these principles relate to online education. Take a moment and reflect on how they apply to the area of HCI that you choose to explore or you have made in your mini project. What role can your technology or can your application play in creating positive societal change? And what risks are there if your technology catches on? Now, political relationships and motivations can often have an enormous impact on the design of technology. We have talked a bit about how technology and interfaces can affect politics and culture and society. But we wouldn't be telling the whole story if we didn't close by noting the alternate relationship as well. From Biker's book of bicycles, backlights and bulbs, the bulbs part refers to the battle of the design of the first fluorescent light bulb in 1938. Remember I told you to watch a movie on the war of this Nikola Tesla and uh, Thomas Edison? Now, General Electric created a new kind of light that was far more energy efficient. The power companies were afraid that this would reduce power consumption and cut into their profits. After a long drawn war, uh, after a long drawn out battle involving the antitrust division of the U.S. government and the U.S. Department of War, the fluorescent bulbs that were ultimately sold were not as good as they technologically could be in order to preserve others' business interests. That issue is more prevalent today than ever. More and more, we see compatibility between devices and usage policies for technologies determined not by what's technologically possible, but by what satisfies political or business needs. So, here's an example. Suppose, to keep up with everything that you like to watch on TV, you have five different subscriptions. You have cable TV, you have Hulu, you have Amazon Prime, you have Netflix and you have an HBO subscription on top of your cable subscription. And that's not to mention things that you watch for free on your own apps like Conan or anything on YouTube. And you might think, wouldn't it be awesome to just have one experience that could navigate among everything you want to watch? And it would be awesome and there's no technological reason against it. But there is a complicated web of ownership and licensing and intellectual property agreements that determine the way that technology works. Technology changes society, but society changes technology too. You have almost certainly experienced political or business motivations changing the way in which a technology of yours works. Similar to the fluorescent light bulb, oftentimes these motivations are to preserve the power or profit of an influential organization in the face of radical change. Sometimes they might be the products of a relationship or an agreement between vendors or organizations to emphasize one another's content. Generally, these are instances where technology either performs suboptimally or has certain features because someone besides the user benefits. So reflect for a second and see if you can think of an instance where some technology you use was designed with this kind of political motivation in mind. Take a minute and then you can write down uh, the, your answer in the comments or you can write down your answer in the Google Classroom but what I want for you is to include it in this week's assignment. Just try to think of those um, instances where you feel that some technology you use was designed with underlying political motivation. So just take a minute and think about it.
So let's discuss it more. This question can have some pretty loaded answers and I encourage you to give those answers in your assignments or in the comments. But I am going to give a slightly more innocuous one. Exclusivity agreements in video games. Imagine I am a video game developer and your CR Shebas is Nintendo. And I'll say, hey Nintendo, I'll agree to release my game only on your console if you agree to promote my game in your console advertisements. I benefit from free advertising. Nintendo benefits from getting a selling point for its console. There's probably no technological reason my game can run on other consoles. But there's this business relationship determining the way that the technology works. Similarly, there is a famous case of Microsoft and IBM. You can go check out this story that how the DOS was one of the operating system of the IBM and it was made proprietary. Similarly, Macintosh is the proprietary operating system for the Apple computers. So you can check out this story and relate to this example which I already gave you and see that what is the resemblance between the things which I have given you in the examples and the things which have already happened in that particular stories. So, in this video, we have discussed the different ways in which interfaces interact with existing power structures or political motivations. We looked at how interfaces can have negative repercussions either by design or by happenstance. We look more optimistically at how interfaces can be powerful tools for equality and justice in the world, whether intentionally or accidentally. We also looked at how it's important to keep in mind different cultures' values while designing interfaces. Now notice how all of these perspectives harken back to the idea that user experience exists not only in individuals and groups but in societies. So let me know if you have any questions in the Google Classroom or in our live session. But one more thing I want to do is to search out for a kind of a more cultural indifferences and more a kind of a societal indifferences like indifferences in terms of culture in, in, in terms of tradition that how they actually play a part in designing interfaces for some regional aspects or for some regions in the world and how it can affect your application which you have designed in a certain way that it can be it can uh, it can have a negative impact or it can have a positive impact on your particular HCI application which you develop for your mini project. So I want you to come up with uh, certain examples in the world with respect to some applications but I also want you to point out the negative and positive impact which could be burdened upon by these cultural indifferences and regional indifferences. One of the things I can uh, give you an example of is Google Glasses. And Google Glasses is the perfect example of how the negative impact can be drawn onto your uh, particular product with the privacy issues. Google Glasses has been banned by many uh, what you say is governments and places where there are some privacy constraints. So look into that as well and reflect your comments and reflect your questions in the live session and Google Classroom. So till our next lecture video, goodbye and thank you.